ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى we will take the last hadith of the fourth chapter which is الحديث الوارد فيما تسبق عقد النكاح it is a hadith pertaining to things that happen before the contract of marriage that's very important so these are the hadiths so this is this hadith this chapter we've been studying what we need to do before marriage and then inshallah ta'ala the next chapter which is the fifth chapter is going to be about a hadith pertaining to things that happen after marriage after the contract of marriage so the last one which is the ninth hadith is ma ja'a fi al-wafa'i bi al-shurut ma lam tahilla haraman aw tuharrim halalan this chapter we're going to be speaking about fulfilling the conditions and the covenants and the promises that a person makes as long as it does not make halal that which is haram and it does not make haram that which is halal imam al-bukhari narrated in his sahih that uqba ibn amir who is the companion narrated from the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he said ahqq al-shuruti an tufu bihi bas tahlaltu bihi al-furuj that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said on the authority of Uqbat ibn Amir which is Sahih Bukhari Ahakku al-shuruti an tufi the greatest you see about the most befitting condition that should be fulfilled is mastahlaltum bil furuj it is that which you have taken lawful the private part of your wives in other words the marriage it, marriage brings it makes halal for you the furuj it makes permissible for you your, your, your this woman and it makes it halal for you to have intimacy with her so the greatest condition that a person can fulfill <coughs> is what happens uh, through marriage this hadith teaches us وَفَاءُ الطَّرَفَيْنِ That both parties, male or female, that they both have to fulfill the conditions and the promises that they make شَرْعًا The promise that you made. So previously, what did we speak about? Just the previous hadith we spoke about is the نعم, the صدقات, the صدقات, the dowries that the woman and the muhur. The woman has to, sorry, the male, the man has to pay the dowry that he promised this woman. Once he gets married to her, he can't say to her, What? And it's very common, it's very, very common in our culture and our people. Are you there? Brothers, this is very common. I don't know, is it common in the Asian community? I haven't said it yet. I haven't said what I was going to say. You just, you're as bad as you have. No, I know you. <laughs> okay, you don't know. It's very common in the Somali community that the diary of the woman, she's made to feel guilty. How are you going to take the diary from me? They make her feel guilty. I, seriously, you're going to take that from me, he says to her. And so she feels so guilty, and she feels so sad about it, that what does, he, what does she do? She just gives up her dowry. She, what does she do? She gives up her dowry. It's not a genuine feeling that she comes and says, you know what, I reduced my dowry for you, what not. It's something he makes her feel bad. Are you there, brothers? He makes her what? He makes her feel bad. It's not impermissible for the man to say to his wife, listen, he sits with her and he says, honey, the diary that we, we agreed upon, are you there? The diary that we agreed upon, just so that we follow the sunnah, reduce it to the barakah, so we can get the barakah. And we can be of those who follow the Prophet Sallallahu path and the, and the wives of the Prophet. But at the end of the day, it's your rights. You can say no, or you can stick to what you've previously made. Are you with me? There's nothing wrong with it. But to make her feel guilty, to make her feel guilty, 
to make her to make her feel guilty and belittle her by saying to her, you have not, you're a gold digger, you want my money, that's all you wanted. This is not fun, this is not right. Because you made that promise and you need to stick to your promise that you made. But this is what we have to understand now. What shurud is the Prophet talking about? Is this condition that the male and the female, both of them have to fulfill, unrestricted? Or is it actually restricted? It's very important. The conditions are what? They are three types. Shurut conditions which are muqtada nikah. They are from the essence of the marriage. For example, the man, the man, and the male, uh, the male and the female, the brother and the sister were getting married. She conditions things that are already part of the marriage. Like, for example, she says, for example, she says, he's going to, he's going to provide me for, free. he's going to give me money, monthly allowance, and he's also going to give me food, and etc. Are you with me? This is a shard which is muqtada nikah. Whether he says okay or not, that is already from the essence of the marriage anyways. Sahih? This is muqtada nikah. This condition, he has to what? He has to come with. For example, providing for her, clothing her, um, and etc. And living with her in good. These are muqtada nikah. This is from the essence of the marriage. She, whether she stipulates it as a, as, a, as a contract or whether she doesn't say it, but she, she accepts your hand in marriage, you go to her father, you get married to her and you give her. That itself is from the aslu nikah. It's from the essence of the nikah. So she doesn't have to state it specifically. The second one is things that are not from the muqtada nikah. They're not from the essence of the nikah. Are you there? It is not from the essence of the nikah. And it doesn't go against the essence of the nikah. Are you with me, brothers? And it doesn't go against the asal of the nikah. For example, she says, every, <coughs> every Ramadan, he has to promise me, he's going to take me Ramadan. Are you with me? This is not the muqtada nikah. This is not from the muqtada nikah. <clears throat> and it doesn't go against the muqtada nikah. It's not, it's not the essence of the marriage. And it doesn't also go, it doesn't go against the essence of the marriage. Are you there? This, if he agrees to it, then it falls under a haq al shuruti and tufu bi mastahlil to be for just fulfill that promise that he made. If he makes that promise to her. Are you there? <coughs> the other thing now. Which is a condition. A condition. That what? The, the a condition is stipulated. One, one person stipulates on the other, or the other stipulates on it. doesn't matter who stipulates it. But it goes against muqtada nikah. It goes against it. It goes against the asr of the nikah. For instance, the woman says to the man, okay, we get married, but you are not allowed to have intimacy with me. Khalas. You can't have intimacy with me. And you have to agree to this. I'm your wife, I will care for you, we'll spend life together, we will live together, but no intimacy, class. Agree to that. Are you there? The scholars, they say, if he agrees to that, are you with me? And he gets married, does he have to fulfill it? Or is it fast to the Jumhur al-Ulama, they say it's fast to the there's no, it won't be considered. 
His presence is like his absence. Because when I got married to you, from the things that come with the marriage was the fact that you would. I will get that from you and you will get it from me. That I will provide for you and that I will you know, live with you in good. That all came with the aqdul nikah. So those are the three types of shurut. There are then those... <coughs> are you with me, brothers? There are those, ki- those, there are those shurut which scholars differ upon. Are you there? There are some shurut that... There are some shurut that the scholars differ upon. The scholars, they differ upon. For instance, a man marries a woman and then once they get married, so the, the shurut is after marriage. She says, I've given up my rights. For example, he's in a polygamous marriage. And she says to him, I've given my night to so-and-so from your wives. I don't need it from you. Is this ja'iz? Is it permissible? The scholars, they say, this is permissible. Based on the hadith of Sauda bint Zama'ah. So they gave her night to who? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. So Aisha used to have two nights. For Sauda gave it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's other wife, Aisha, her co-wife. And Aisha used to have two nights. And the reason why Soda bint Zama'a did that was because she had grown old and she didn't want to lose the opportunity of being the Prophet Sallallahu wife. Also from the conditions which are fasid al-i'tibar. Even that though it doesn't go against what? Are you with me brothers? How many, how many, how many times did I mention? Three. Three. And a fourth one. Which is? The fourth one. It's a condition that doesn't go against the muqtaman nikah. Are you there? But it's fasted al It's fasted It doesn't go against the muqtaman nikah. So I mentioned four that are two that are, are, are that are muqtaba, that are considered, and two that are not considered. So hey. So two that are considered is one. That is min nikah, which you have to fulfill. Whether you write it on a contract or not, it doesn't matter. The second one is, it's not min muqtada nikah. And it doesn't go against muqtada nikah. It doesn't go against the essence of the nikah. And it doesn't go against the maqasid of the nikah. Those two are, the hadith is talking about it. And you have to fulfill those confidence and those conditions that you make. The next two are, one that goes against muqtada nikah. Fasid al-i'timar. Fasid al-i'timar. We don't look at that. Okay. The second one is, it doesn't go against the Muqtada Nikah. But it's also fasid al Atibar because there's Musus that made it. And that from those is what? If a woman says to a man, I will get married to you, but you have to let your previous wife go. You have to divorce this girl that you're married to, and then and only then can you start thinking about getting married to me. And this is haram, and it is fa- it's a shart, and it's a shart which is fasid. It's a condition which is null and void, based on the hadith, and it is not permissible for the man to fulfill that promise. And he can't, can't do that. Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, on the authority of the on the, of authority of Hurairah, which is Sahih Bukhari, that the Prophet said, لا يحل لمرأة تسأل طلاق أختها. It is not permissible, you see, for a woman to ask the divorce of her sister. She asked her husband, the, the brother, divorce your wife, the wife. She's not allowed to. Why? So she can take her position and gain what she used to gain. So a man comes up to a sister, he's in a polygamous marriage, he's already, he's already married to a sister. So when he comes up to her and he asks her for a honey marriage, she finds out that he's what? That he's married. She said, okay, you want to marry me? Then let your wife go. The reason why she wants to do that is because she wants to have this man all to herself. This sister, this particular sister, the conditions that she's stipulating here, 
that brother is not allowed to fulfill, fulfill it. And the sister that <coughs> thinks to herself that a man is going to let his wife go because of you, you shouldn't be your trust. And there's not going to come from it a successful marriage with him. The way he has let, her, let his other wife go is the way he's going to let you go tomorrow when he sees another one he likes. And it falls under khiyana, deception, towards your co-wife, uh, for, for your pre the actual wife that you're married to. And it is also a deception, huh, to if she has children for you. And it is also evil from the sister to what? To condition that he divorces the other wife. She should fear Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and be concerned in that regard. So the Prophet sallallahu he prohibited that. So this hadith, أَحَقُّ الشُّرُوطِ أَن تُوفُوا بِهِ مَا اسْتَحَلَلْتُمْ بِهِ الْفُرُوجِ Many things to enter into it. So if the dowry that you got married to the sister was very large in amount, just remember that you have to fulfill your side of the promise that you made. And you have to make sure that you give her her rights in that regard. And everything else falls under this, which is al-infaqu alayha to provide for her, wa kiswatuha to clothe her, wa sakaniha and giving her residency, a place to stay. All of that bil ma'aruf in good. All of that in good. Inshallah ta'ala for today's uh, session where I'm going to conclude conclude there bi'idni Allah al-Kareem anything which I have said that was wrong fa innahu minni wa min ash-shaytani wallahu wa rasuluhu bari'an min it is from me ash-shaytan and Allah his messenger are free from it subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk